Hi everybody, so I'm Malik Aaron Aaron. We are gonna dive straight into controversy with this review that I already said in the last video. <sighs> anime. Y'all know what it is. This is Japanese animation. It's been so many over over the years, over the decades. I mean there's so many famous ones you can name off the top of your head. Dragon Ball, Pokemon, Naruto, One Piece, um, Death Note is another, One Punch Man, uh, I think I'm missing a couple, hmm, there's a, there's a lot, those are like the ones that really like stick out in my, you know, my Sonic X, Cory in the House, Shrek, okay, I'm gonna stop, <laughs> but, you should all know, like, what anime is. You know. And there's been a lot of good anime, and there's been a lot of ironic anime. But the one thing that Hollywood cannot get right at all. Live action adaptations of anime. There is one thing they cannot get right. Similar to video game movies. Although they are getting better at video game movies. They are almost there. Hopefully with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, they can finally reach their peak. But with anime, you know, live action anime adaptations, all of them have been universally described as terrible or lacking. I mean, we had the amazingly awful Dragon Ball Evolution, a movie I reviewed a long time ago and I'd never want to relive ever again. Speed Racer, okay, that gets a bit of a pass because it was entertaining. As long as you're entertaining, you get a free pass from me. Um, I think there was the Astro Boy, that crappy CGI anime movie that bombed real bad. Uh, what else? Hmm. Should I think else? Other real anime adaptations? I know there are others. Oh, Death Note. We're not even going to talk about that. <laughs> um, but this one is one of the most infamous anime adaptations because it does a thing that's considered a sin in movie world. Whitewashing. Good old-fashioned whitewashing. Just taking like a, a property that was from another culture and Americanizing it. Basically, basically replacing like all the Japanese people with a bunch of white people or putting it in an American setting, yada, yada, yada. You all know how it goes. Yes, people hate that. And now like today they're starting to fix that by you know not doing it as much, by being appropriate to the culture, not destroying it. But this movie does some things that, you, that it was just like, nah, not gonna do that. <sighs> Ghost in the Shell, starring Scarlett Johansson. Ugh. <laughs> Where I begin? If you know Ghost in the Shell, if you know the property, you can already see the very significant problem, right? there because she's white in the original she's well supposed to be asian because that's how the original well japanese my bad. that's how it's supposed to be in the original but because you gotta sell this to an american audience and i get it okay i understand why they do it because they can make, so they can make money in America. They did the same thing with the Great Wall with Matt Damon. They put Matt Damon in there. That way people can recognize him because he's a recognizable actor. That way, you know, people in America be like, hey, Matt Damon in in a a movie. I'm gonna watch it. Although now they they didn't watch that. They didn't watch downsizing either. <laughs> yeah, but I understand why. Although it's not a good thing, I understand why they do it. And I can understand why they put Scarlett Johansson in this role, because, like, a couple years before this, they did Lucy, 
which was a huge hit. So obviously, and also she's Black Widow in the MCU. So it makes sense to cast her in this type of movie. You know, it's a, it's her genre basically. <sighs> but we're gonna get to all the bad stuff first. But before that, let's read this long description, which is kind of surprising considering, you know, most of these descriptions these days are very, you know, non-existent. Scarlett Johansson is terrific and is visually stunning. Definitely. Uh, Ghost in the Shell. An action-packed adventure set in the future world where people are enhanced with technology. Believing she was rescued from near death, Major Johan Johansson becomes the first of her kind. A human mind inside an artificial body designed to fight the war against cybercrime. While investigating a dangerous criminal, Major makes a shocking discovery. The corporation that created her lied about her past life in order to control her. Unsure what to believe, Major will stop at nothing to unravel the mystery of her true identity and exact revenge against the corporation she was built to serve. Packed with heart-pounding excitement, it's the movie critics are calling a classic in the making. No. Okay, okay. Whoever said that, who said that? The nerdist, Dan Casey. Look, I know you got your own opinion, okay? Everyone has their own opinion. I can respect that, but come on, man. Really think about it. Do you really think this, this thing, going to be a classic in like 10 years? I don't think so. I think it's going to be forgotten in 10 years. I think it's forgotten now. So, yeah, I, I don't know why he would say that. Maybe he got paid by Paramount. I don't know. So yes, yeah, so that's basically the whole plot in a nutshell. Major is just this. She's a yeah, she's a robot body, but she has a human mind like in her robot body, and she wears this really weird looking outfit. Where like in the beginning, like you look at it, you're just like it's. You you look you really look like it's, it was the same thing in the anime too. You just say like, it's is she naked. <laughs> Of course, she's she's not naked, but like the like the way it looks is like so close, to like the skin tone that it almost looks like she's naked. <laughs> That's one thing I know I noticed with you know her outfit. Man, like, because it, well, it does help her like with certain things. She has her friend. I forgot his name. That's bad. And then she has like this dude. Uh, what's his name? Beat uh, Takeshi uh, Kitano, who you know is a very famous, you know, a very famous actor, Japanese actor. He had Takeshi's Challenge. I remember that John Tron episode, man. That that game looks horrifying. <laughs> I would never play it. So yeah, they're just discovering like stuff, and then she realizes, I'm not who I am. I don't know what I am. I'm gonna figure out the truth. <laughs> and then she goes on her way with her, the movie. Pros and cons. Pros. The visual effects. Oh my gosh. They are the most, some of the best effects I've ever, I've ever seen. Honestly, I'm not even joking. Like the effects are so mind blowing and stunning. Like you'll be, your jaw will drop. How good this movie looks. I mean, they definitely spent some spent some money on this movie. I mean, just the way everything looks to like, the, well, not really. The action is kind of, eh. but I mean, some of it's really good. I mean, like the costume designs, the way everything, you know, the character design, just the city, the landscape, whatnot. It all looks just gorgeous, honestly. Now, I wish, like, if the rest of the movie wasn't so poor, if I had the, if I would rate this movie on visual effects alone, I'd give it an 11 out of 10. That's how good they are. It's a shame the rest of the movie is just so poor in comparison. Uh, what, what other stuff? The music is not all that great. Uh, Scarlett Johansson, considering she was in this very controversial movie, and she had to deal with a lot of 
unwanted press when, with this movie. I think she does a good enough job. I mean, she is portraying a robot, technically, so you're probably wondering, why is she so emotionless? Well, she's a robot, technically. Well, she has a human mind a robot, but still a robot body. So, you know, I understand. Like, some of the other characters are just kind of hidden this. So, yeah. Cons. So, the whole controversy with whitewashing. Making the, the original, made it with Japanese. This is a movie, she white. <laughs> so, you're probably wondering how they're going to explain that. Well, turns out. Her former body, before she got the major body, you know, her character major, she was Japanese! And then they put her mind in a white person! How horrible does that sound? I mean, you basically... You combated... You, you tried to fight off fire... With gasoline. I mean, come on, Paramount. You really should have thought this through. <laughs> with, like, doing that. And it's just... It just makes the whole situation even worse. And originally, before this movie coming out, I'm just like, why does everybody have such a problem with it? I mean, Japan doesn't have a problem with it. They knew it would happen eventually. <laughs> I think, like... Uh, like I think... It may have been like one of the people behind the original Ghost in the Shell. He was just like, what's the problem? And I'm like, yeah, like, what is the huge problem? And then you see the movie and it's like, ah, there's the huge problem right there. Can't believe they did that. That's just so, ugh, disgusting. <laughs> uh, the story is very cliche. It clearly, like, it doesn't try to be super complex. I mean, it asks us, like, some questions, but, like, do we really need all this technology? Like, is there, is the this you know all this technology kind of messing with us and whatnot? They ask these questions early on, but then in the end they just forget about it. The rest of the movie is your basic generic action movie, you know, with twists and turns and ugh. You know, like most of the characters you really just don't care about. I mean, Major you care about the most, because she's the only recognizable one. Everyone else is just kind of background-ish. They have a moment or two, but they're just kind of there, honestly. <sighs> Overall, this movie... I don't even know what to say. Despite how... Impressive the visuals are, despite, you know, Scarlett Johansson, she's really trying. It's terrible. Considering what they, because the story is lame, what they do the major is just, uh, it just makes the whole controversy worse. The rest of the characters are just bland, the music's not very good. It's, it's a forgettable movie. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10, honestly. It's just... <sighs> I'm kind of glad I didn't review this movie last year. I kind of just waited till all the controversy died down. I remember I saw this movie. I saw, like, it was a two movies. This and the Power Rangers reboot. I saw the Power Rangers reboot first. And that, it was alright. But then I saw this. And at first I didn't think much of it, but then after a while I'm just like, wow, this this is this is horrible. <laughs> How do they get away with this? Uh, but this movie ended up bombing, so hooray! <laughs> and I don't know what the next anime movie is gonna be. I is Detective Pikachu an anime? Or is it based off an anime? No, it's a video game movie. What's the thing, Pokemon? It's confusing. It's an anime, and then it's a video game. So if they make a Pokemon movie, which one is it going to be? Like, it's, it's confusing. <sighs> yeah, that's Ghost in the Shell. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Next review. So, you know how I've done, like, the Alien vs. Predator movies, and some of the Alien movies, mainly Prometheus, and that 
awful alien covenant. But I realized I've never done any Predator movies. Like, wow. I never... Dang. <laughs> I mean, there's only a couple. I mean, I know the new one's going to be coming out relatively soon. Like, in a couple... In a few months. So, thought it'd be best to review one of the movies. And the one I'm doing was the... Well, the latest movie that came out in 2010. Predator. Tours with a plural, just like aliens. Except Predators isn't a classic like aliens is. Man, that sounded bad. <laughs> so yeah, we are doing Predators. That will be the next review. So make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, and I will see you all next time. And I am 